It's that time of year where we are officially starting seeds, but the question comes down to, should you use a heat mat or not? And if you don't have a heat mat, what else could you use that would replace or mimic a heat mat in some way? And these are all household stuff that you definitely have laying around or are just in and around the anatomy, I guess, of your house. If you're new to the Gick crew, this is not just for Canadians. This is for anyone that likes to garden with science. And with that being said, I like to take the theory, so the studies and the science, apply it to gardening or houseplant care, but, big but, the comment section is usually smarter than I am. The reason why I say that is because everyone has their own microclimate and their own experience. And theory, while it works in theory, in practice, that's not always the case. So find your Gick crew buddy down below. They'll usually say what zone or city or province or state that they are in and their kind of experience using heat mats in this case. So do check that out. And if you wanna join us and help with the conversation, subscribe. So I've spoken about this before. All seeds have a temperature range that they can grow in or germinate in. There's a low range and anything below that and the seed will tend to rot or not germinate at all. And anything above that range, things tend to get really leggy or overgrown or in some cases not germinate whatsoever. Now there's a middle range, an ideal range. And the ideal range is simply referencing the germination rates being higher combined with the fact that the plants that do germinate, they're not super leggy and overgrown because Excess heat can cause very similar symptoms that we see it with excess nitrogen fertilizer as well as improper lighting. I'm going to link a PDF down below. It's from the University of California. And in it, there is a list of different seeds and what their ideal temperature ranges are. So the absolute minimum, the absolute maximum, and then also that ideal temp range in the middle. This you can use for your seed germination stuff in the future indoors as well as outdoors. And then I think I have a video from last year where I actually so show the soil temp thermometer. It looks like a turkey thermometer and you just stick it in the soil and it'll tell you what your soil temp is at. And mine actually tells you what seeds should be planted based on that soil temp. So that is something that you should get if you really wanna maximize your results. Now, one myth that we need to definitely bust is that the soil is a different temperature than that of the ambient air. And while this is true when it comes to soil outdoors, it is not true when it comes to small little cells that we find in our seed starting setups. So these cells are not deep enough. They're not connected to enough earth and they're not, um, you know, exposed to shade and all that. Sort. So the soil, physically outside does tend to be cooler, particularly the deeper you get in that soil profile. Your potting soil that you have indoors, particularly in your little tiny seed starting cells, that is the same ambient temperature as the room. So if your seed starting guide, if that California list shows you a seed that can germinate at room temp, then that seed doesn't need heat because it will do just fine in your home. So here's my methods for heating your seeds without a heat mat. Now keep in mind, a lot of these are going to be short bursts of, and it's not gonna be continuous supply that we sometimes, that we see with heat uh, mats specifically. Now, what I will say, heat mats, you're supposed to leave on for 24 hours. You're not supposed to shut them off and on and whatever. I am gonna do the video on temperature differential. I swear I filmed this last year. I don't think I did. I think I, researched it and I think I was looking at studies about it, but I don't think I ever put pen to paper or made a video for you guys. I think I was just doing that for like my own research. And so temperature differential, essentially the crash course in it is that the nighttime temperatures are lower than the daytime temperatures and there are some benefits to that. So while this, these methods don't supply a continuous level of heat like a heat mat would, the, that fluctuation actually probably isn't that big of a deal considering it's not gonna dip super low because it is in your house and there is some still, there's obviously ambient heat in it. So number one and probably the simplest is warm water. Now you don't want this super hot, 
Sun warmed is my absolute favorite, but if you can't get that, then just warm water out of the tap. I know, sounds crazy. As well as misting. If you mist with a warm water, if you're classically an overwaterer, you get lots of mold on top of your soil, vermiculite first, and then make sure you mist. I have videos on that, so go check those out. But this will help ensure that there is a, a warm, influx of temperature and if you have the cloche on top everything's kind of piled close together it should stay warm for a small period of time and this rule actually applies to the seedlings themselves in the future these seedlings do best under environments where they're not getting constantly shocked with cold water and i take this to a different level particularly in my greenhouse where i have a big giant chem it's an old chemical drum there's no chemical in it. It's just a drum of plastic. And I fill that with water <laughs> and I actually put all my fertilizer in there and I have an old broom um, that doesn't have the broom attached and I, it's the red hair and I'm left-handed too. So I just like make my little witch's brew in my greenhouse and that is a warm water. And I just continue to refill that. I continue to add fertilizer to it. And that, that temperature of that sun warm water makes a big, 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 big difference when it comes to plant survival and just lessening shock and all that sort of stuff. I, there's a big difference. I personally find that there's a big difference when you water with warm water. Next up is black trays and or cloches, meaning that plastic clear casing in sun. So this doesn't have to be outdoors. This can be indoors in a really nice sunny room in a space where it's getting solarization. And that's probably the best space to have it because if you put it outside, it sometimes can get a little bit too intense and you might cook things, but that little bit of heat. Now, while it's not, you know, heating the soil from the bottom up, what it is doing is it's ambiently changing the air around it. And remember these cells, this soil is not super deep. It's not, there's not a ton that we need to warm up. So that little bit of light that's now being concentrated or solarized inside of our seed starting kit, that's enough to get us the heat we need to get really good germination. So just solarization. And if you have old school grow lights, meaning not the LED ones that they have nowadays, um, if you have like old fluorescents, sometimes that heat on its own own um, combined with the cloche in particular is enough heat to get things going. Warm spaces. So this one is, it's going to really depend on your, your home. There's, okay, this is my list <laughs> for what you can use because I say this because I only have one heat mat and so I will get very inventive depending on how many seeds I'm starting in some cases. Um, but I have a fireplace. I have a natural gas fireplace and there's a pilot light inside of that fireplace. Now, don't do this if you're going to turn the fireplace up to like 30 degrees Celsius and cook everything, but that pilot light has almost like a constant heat being radiated out through the glass of that natural gas furnace. It's so bad, in fact, that I actually shut it off in the summertime because when I'm exercising, I do workout videos all the time, but anyways, I can actually feel the heat from that glass. So that is a great way to get a heat temperature increase. Now, of course, that's coming from one end. So you want to rotate the container and make sure everything's even and whatever else, because you will get uneven uh, germination if you just leave it all on one side. So that's number one. Number two is vents, um, radiators. Anything that gives you the heat for your home is going to give you the heat for the seedlings. Now, it's still cold enough here in Canada. I don't know where you are, how warm or cold it may be, but my heat most definitely is still on. I cannot film in my yard whatsoever. Anyone from Saskatchewan could actually tell you how much snow we have right now. I would need, it's, it would be literally up to my waist if I decided to go film in my garden, hence why we're in this robe. So I still have the heat on. That is a great way to get things to germinate. After that, it becomes even, less conventional. So old refrigerators tend to be warmer on the tops of them. If you often make your own meals at home and you're starting the oven up, that sort of thing, the oven just in and around near the oven in the kitchen tends to be warmer. Um, if you oftentimes have a bathroom that you're constantly, there's lots of showers and bath and it's always getting heated, heated up. Uh, a room that seems a little bit warmer, anything that ambiently 
gets an increase in temperature can ultimately help those seedlings, even if it's in short bursts. Short bursts can make a difference because it's gonna warm it up, the soil and the cloche, the whole ecosystem, if you will, and then it should hold on to that for a little bit of time. But like I said, there's no reason why you absolutely have to use heat mats. It's only to speed up the process. And you are still ahead of the curve right now in this moment, particularly with peppers and tomatoes and okra, that you can get things to germinate long, long, long prior to when you would actually need to utilize that heat mat. Now, April, when I do my April seed starting video, you're gonna hear me say heat mat, heat mat, heat mat a million times, and that's because that is the month where you would need to start utilizing the heat mat techniques. So, I hope this video helps you out. Let me know in the comments down below how you heat your seeds, or if you don't heat them whatsoever, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.